In the first Ninja Turtles Power Rangers crossover comic, the Shredder became the Green Ranger. He's known as Green Ranger Shredder, and he got his powers from stealing Tommy's power coin. In 1990, due to the success that the Ninja Turtles were having, they came out with an album called Coming Out of Their Shells. There was even a live musical tour that they did by the same name, where they would perform songs from the album. Leonardo from the 90s Ninja Turtles movies appeared in a cameo in the 1991 film Bernard and the Genie. The Genie in the film transforms a young boy's Ninja Turtles figure into a real turtle. Pretty cool. Did you know, in 1991, the Ninja Turtles went on the Barbara Walters show? This was to promote the Secret of the Ooze movie that had just come out. It's pretty funny and it even has Donatello crying uncontrollably at the end. Did you know, in 2020 and 2021, a pair of commercials came out for the UK-based insurance company, Direct Line. It features these really cool looking Ninja Turtles. Those guys are dead. They're always gonna beat us. This sucks! Dude, relax. Do some yoga or something. Yogurt! Did you know, in 1994, the Ninja Turtles came out with a Christmas special titled, We Wish You a Turtle Christmas? It's one of the most bizarre versions of the Ninja Turtles that's ever existed. Did you know, in the IDW Comics version of the Ninja Turtles, when the Shredder is growing up, he finds out that he is the reincarnated version of his father's former enemy. When he does find this out, he confronts his father, and let's just say things don't end very well. A super dark but fascinating story. In the early 2000s, we almost got a live-action Ninja Turtles made-for-TV movie on the Hallmark Channel. Recently, through maquettes that were revealed, we've seen what the designs of the Turtles could have been. You can see a Leonardo and a Donatello. Before the 2007 film TMNT, we got to see how Leonardo became the Ghost of the Jungle in that movie. It was in his prequel comic for the film. It shows Master Splinter sending Leo on a year-long journey to hone in his skills, where he goes all around the world learning different lessons. His final stop is in Costa Rica, where he eventually protects a small town and becomes the alter ego we see in the movie, the Ghost of the Jungle. Co-creator of the Ninja Turtles, Peter Laird, had one of the 1990s Donatello Ninja Turtle suit from the original movie. He originally built a jointed wooden skeleton to insert into the suit to be able to pose it in different positions for display, although the suit ended up being too heavy for this, and so it ended up sprawled out on a chair in his studio, where it sat more or less for 15 years. The 2003 Ninja Turtles cartoon almost had a season called TMNT Overload. This season would have taken place after the fast forward season. Using time travel, the Turtles would have ended up teaming up with kid versions of themselves, although we ended up getting the Back to the Sewer season instead. The Ninja Turtles from the original 1990 movie appeared in the music video for the song Turtle Power. You can see Leonardo and Michelangelo hanging out in New York, getting pizza, fighting the foot, and eventually receiving a medal from the mayor. Another cool look at these turtles outside the movie. Concept art for the unmade Hallmark Channel Ninja Turtles movie from the early 2000s shows that the Foot Clan would have returned with a mysterious new Shredder. This Shredder would have been another turtle, a long lost brother of the Ninja Turtles. An interesting concept that never happened. What do you think? Did you know in the original Ninja Turtles movie, when April is sketching all the Ninja Turtles, we never saw a sketch of Michelangelo? Now they did plan on doing one, but it didn't make the film. Recently, the unused sketch has surfaced, with details of him taking the kidnapping of Splinter pretty seriously in the movie. Would you have wanted to see that? In the Batman vs. Ninja Turtles movie, when Leonardo is fighting Ra's al Ghul, Leonardo gets pinned to the ground with a blade pointed at his chest. The way this is framed appears to be an easter egg to the original 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, where Shredder pins down Leonardo in a similar fashion. Pretty cool. In the mid-90s, everyone thought Donatello was killed off in the Image Comics version of the Ninja Turtles. In a struggle on a helicopter, Don fell out and smashed into the ground below. On the brink of dying, one of the cyborgs that fell with him takes over his body and we got Cyborg Donatello. A while back, a Raphael suit from one of the 90s Ninja Turtles movies was up for sale on the website Prop Store Auction. You can see that the face had fallen apart a little bit and looked super creepy, although not as creepy as that Leonardo suit from a while back. But overall, the suit looks pretty good. In the 90s, after the third Ninja Turtles movie came out, they worked up a couple different ideas for a Ninja Turtles 4. One of these concepts included an interdimensional doorway, also an evil April, presumably from a parallel dimension, and most notable, a new fifth turtle named Kirby. In 1994, the Ninja Turtles got a direct-to-video live-action special called Turtle Tunes. It's probably one of the cringiest version of the Turtles to have ever come out. We laugh and sing and do our thing with the Turtles. The Batman vs. Ninja Turtles movie has many Easter eggs to the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie. When the Turtles first arrive in Gotham, they pop their heads up out of the sewers. The composition looks very similar to the movie poster of the 1990 movie. Pretty cool. This is amazing! 
Did you know, in the Mirage Comics version of the Ninja Turtles, Splinter was forced to eat a rat? This is when he falls into a silo and breaks his leg. Splinter, now stuck without food, begins seeing visions of the Rat King, who eventually convinces Splinter into giving into his hunger and crunch. Splinter eats a rat. On the website Tom Spina Designs, you can see that they've restored a couple different Leonardo suits from the original Ninja Turtles movie. This one here can be seen in parts before it was put together. And here's a look at it fully restored. In the Ninja Turtles image comics from the 90s, Leonardo loses a hand. This is when he's fighting the character King Komodo. During the fight, King Komodo chomps off Leo's arm, causing Leonardo to scream and pass out. Eventually, Donatello makes him a bionic hand, although Leo doesn't use it for very long. In the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, the hideout of the Shredder and the Foot Clan was filmed in the Ideal Cement Factory, a closed cement plant in North Carolina. Dino Hatton from the Super Mario Brothers movie and Top Dollar's Nightclub from the Crow movie were filmed here as well. Pretty cool. The 2007 film TMNT had prequel comics. The Raphael prequel was called Disposable Heroes. It shows how Raphael takes over the role of the Night Watcher after his friend that previously donned the suit is killed. A pretty dark origin to Raphael's alter ego in the movie. April was turned into a fifth Ninja Turtle in an Archie comic special back in 1994. Mutagen was used on her and turned her into a turtle. She wears a white bandana, has an A on her belt buckle for April, and wields a katana that she was training with at the time. A TMNT anime was released in 1996, lasting only two episodes. This anime was meant to promote the TMNT Super Mutants and Metal Mutants toy line. The anime used the designs and characters of the 1987 cartoon, although they look a little cooler in my opinion. What do you think? After Ninja Turtles 3, one concept for a fourth live action movie was going to be called Ninja Turtles 4 The Next Mutation, not the TV show. In this, the turtles mutation would have kept changing them as they got older, and they would have developed new abilities. Concept art of what it could look like can be found online. In the Batman vs. Ninja Turtles movie, this shot from the opening sequence of the 1987 Ninja Turtles cartoon was recreated. This is when the turtles first arrive in Gotham, a nice little easter egg to the classic turtles. In 2016, Nickelodeon released a series of Ninja Turtle shorts. One was called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles Take Time and Space, and it briefly displayed these really great looking turtles. What do you think of the designs of these? Let me know. Follow for more. Got him! In the 2012 Ninja Turtles show title sequence, the pose that the Ninja Turtles make at the end of the intro song is a callback to the cover of the original comic book from back in the 80s. Did you know? In 2001, before the TMNT 2003 show had come out, a 3D animated Ninja Turtles show got shopped around to different studios. Footage of the pilot of what this show would have looked like was shown on the old TMNT website and can still be found online today. What do you think? Would this have worked? What the heck are those? I don't know, but they're not of this earth. Back in 2019, a decaying Leonardo suit from the third live-action Ninja Turtles movie went up for auction. This is the one that has that scary face due to the rubber suit receding around the mouth area. People often mistake this suit for a Donatello one because of the faded headband, but if you look at his belt straps, which are the ones Leonardo wears, and also the name on the listing of the auction, you can see that it's actually Leonardo. In 1993, the WWE, or WWF as it was known at the time, had a pair of wrestlers that looked like Ninja Turtles. They were called the Toxic Turtles. One wore an orange headband, and the other one wore a reddish one. Inside the costumes were wrestlers Barry Hardy and Dwayne Gill. You may remember Gill as he was the Goldberg parody wrestler, Gilberg. Back in the 90s, the Ninja Turtles would perform live at the Disney MGM Studios Park in Florida. They would perform songs, they would do specials, and you'd even see them driving around in their turtle van. Back then, it was typical to see non-Disney properties perform at the parks. At one point in the 1987 Ninja Turtle show, Shredder threw Donatello on a generator, and when Donatello woke up, he had a different personality, a more aggressive and vengeful personality, especially towards the Shredder. It's around this time that Donatello gets inspired by a comic the Turtles had laying around, and he takes up the alter ego form of the Dark Turtle, which makes him look a little bit like Batman. In the 90s Ninja Turtles image comics, after the turtles dealt with an attack by some cyborgs, Raphael began to inspect one of the cyborg heads, only to have it self-destruct, severely injuring half of his face. Raphael would wear Casey Jones's mask for a while after, and then moved over to wearing an eye patch. While filming the original 1990 Ninja Turtles movie in North Carolina, the turtle animatronic heads would malfunction while filming due to radio waves of airplanes landing nearby. It would cause the faces of the turtles to go haywire. Pretty wild. In some concept art for the unmade Ninja Turtles movie that would have been on the Hallmark Channel in the early 2000s, you can see that the Turtles would have worn a lot of clothes and accessories in this version. In some images, we can see Raphael in a beanie getting tattooed. We can also see the Turtles in sunglasses. And in this image here, we can see the Turtles in big winter jackets finding Splinter at a derelict fair. Super interesting. 
In 2001, Mirage Studios pitched the new TMNT cartoon to Warner Brothers. It would have shown on either Kids WB or Cartoon Network. There was even an animatic created showing these turtles in motion. The program was turned down, and a couple years later, we got the 2003 show instead. In the original Ninja Turtles comics, after Shredder was killed in the first issue, he was eventually resurrected by mystic worms that took the shape of his body by eating his remains. Leonardo would end up having to face him alone in a final battle, where Leo ended up decapitating him. In a commercial for the 1991 movie, Secret of the Ooze, we get a rare look at one of the turtles in a setting other than the movie. The commercial has Michelangelo running through a park as a bunch of kids chase him but are unable to capture him. A rare look at one of these turtles outside the movie. Michelangelo became a human in the 1987 Ninja Turtle show. This is when Shredder tried to poison the turtles with anti-mutagen cookies. Although Shredder's attempt fails, Michelangelo still wants to try it, and this is what he ends up looking like. This didn't last long as it was unstable. Human hands? In an episode from the 2003 Ninja Turtle show, titled Same As It Never Was, Donatello gets sent 30 years into an alternate dystopian future. Here he meets up with his brothers, who have all gone through a lot over the years. Michelangelo is missing his arm, Raph is missing an eye, and Shredder has taken over the world. It's a pretty dark story. In the old Image Ninja Turtles comics, Splinter got mutated into a mutant vampire bat. In this feral state, he goes crazy and starts transforming regular citizens into giant bats as well. Eventually, after the turtles fight and beat him in the astral plane, he is snapped out of this and goes back to normal. In the comic adaptation of the original Ninja Turtles 1990 movie, when Raphael is at the movie theater, instead of watching the movie Critters like he does in the movie, he instead was watching a movie called Bat Dude, which makes sense, as this was around the time that the Batman 89 movie was coming out. What do you think? Would this have been cool to see in the movie? For the TMNT 2007 movie, one of the ideas that Imagey, the animation studio, had for a sequel was that Michelangelo would have been the last one left after his brothers and Splinter got affected by an anti-mutagen serum. You can see that a mock-up poster that they made said TMNT2, and most interestingly, showed a peek at what the Shredder would have looked like in this universe. In the 2012 Ninja Turtle show, the character of Splinter is killed at one point by Super Shredder, and he doesn't come back. He is buried at the O'Neill farmhouse. It's actually a really impactful and probably one of the saddest moments in Turtles history. <laughs> Back in the 80s and 90s, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were called the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles in some countries. Local censorship policies in some places deemed the word ninja to have violent connotations. And so instead of some places having TMNT, some places had TMHT. The original 1990 Ninja Turtles movie has an alternate ending that almost made it into the film. It would have had the characters of April and Danny, after the events of the movie, pitching the idea of Ninja Turtles to a comic book company. While this is going on, the turtles would have been seen peeking through a window as they watched the meeting. Far-fetched! Sheesh! Yeah! Until the Blair Witch Project in 1999, the original Ninja Turtles 1990 movie was the highest grossing independent picture of all time, earning 135 million domestically and 66 million internationally, which is really impressive for the time, especially considering its low budget. <laughs> Raphael becomes the Shredder and takes over the Foot Clan in the Image Comics version of the Ninja Turtles. Just as he's getting the idea to become the Shredder, we see a room filled with all the different variations of the Shredder armor. Pretty cool, follow for more. In the Batman vs. Ninja Turtles animated movie, each turtle has a hidden initial on his belt. You can see a blue L there on Leonardo's, a belt buckle shaped like a D on Donatello's, an M on Michelangelo's, and a lowercase r on Raphael's. For the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, Leonardo and Michelangelo come out in the music video for the song Spin That Wheel. They can be seen fighting foot soldiers in a movie theater, ordering pizza at the concession stand, and dancing along to the song. A nice rare look at these turtle suits outside the movie. In Ninja Turtles 1990, Michelangelo's in-suit actor, Michelin Sisti, also performs the role of the pizza delivery guy who brings the food to the sewer where Michelangelo is in the movie. So it's kind of like Michelangelo delivered himself a pizza. Forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. There's actually concept art of Splinter for the unmade live action fourth Ninja Turtles movie that never happened. In the film, the mutagen in the bloodstream would have changed the turtles and Splinter as they aged. This is what Splinter would have turned into. The idea was to make him a more active fighter in the battles. Michelangelo from the 1987 Ninja Turtle show was featured in the cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue special back in the 90s. He joins forces with other popular characters such as Bugs Bunny, Garfield, Alvin and the Chipmunks, and many others. This crossover was so massive, it makes the Avengers look like a tiny team of street-level superheroes. Cowabunga, dude! How did you ever get so totally cool? 
in the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie. The actor who played Raphael also gets a cameo role in the film. Josh Pice, the Raphael actor, appeared as the passenger that is shown in the back of the taxi right after Raphael rolls over the hood of the cab while chasing Casey Jones. So it's kind of like he saw himself. What the heck was that? Look like sort of a big title. The original story for Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze was that the secret was that the ooze was created by Utrams, those little Krang like aliens. Professor Perry was actually supposed to be a humanoid robot with the Utram inside of him. However, the story was later changed, but originally there was supposed to be a scene at the end of the movie of Perry lifting up his shirt, revealing a stomach cavity where the Utram would be. The scene unfortunately was never filmed. Well, you're the last one, aren't you? The Ninja Turtle suits in the third movie were created by a different company than the first two films. Jim Henson's Creature Shop made the suits for the first two movies, but in the third movie, the All Effects Company took over. The result was a different look and feel for the turtles. What did you think of the suits in the third movie? Casey Jones had a daughter in the old school Mirage Ninja Turtles comics. This was when Casey went away and fell in love with a waitress named Gabrielle. Soon after, Casey found out that Gabrielle had become pregnant before they met. She expected he would leave when he found out, but he didn't and instead stayed and the two got married. Soon after, Gabrielle died while giving birth and Casey raised the child as his own, a baby girl whose name was Shadow Jones, who grows up and becomes an interesting character in her own right. There are behind the scenes photos of the 1997 show Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation on the old Ninja Turtles website. You can see the suits being made, the actors performing martial arts moves in the suits, and even co-creator of the Ninja Turtles Kevin Eastman hanging out with the actors. Although not the best received turtle outing, it's still pretty cool seeing these long lost turtle photos. In the 2003 Ninja Turtle show, Michelangelo sometimes turns into a superhero persona called Turtle Titan. He wears a hood with a cape, has an emblem on his chest with two T's, and wears boots. As Turtle Titan, he may not have any superpowers, but he's still quite effective. He uses his grappling hook and a small shield in combat. Michelangelo even befriends other superheroes that he looks up to. Who knew Michelangelo had such a heroic alter ego? That's me, Mikey under the cape and cow. Splinter in the 2007 TMNT film has a memento wall displaying objects from the previous Ninja Turtles movies. On the wall, you can see the canister of ooze and Shredder's helmet, both which are designed very similarly to the first two live action movies. Additionally, you can also spot the Time Scepter, Turtle Armor, and Lord Norinaga's armor from the third movie as well. This has led many fans to believe that the 2007 film is set in the same continuity as the previous movies. What do you think? Is it connected to the original trilogy? In the IDW Comics version of the Ninja Turtles, the Turtles and Splinter are actually a reincarnated family from feudal Japan. It's true, a big portion of the story is the Turtles getting justice for what Shredder did to them in the past. You see, this version Shredder has learned to live an unnaturally long life. So he's still alive in the present when they come back as turtles. The initial buildup and eventual face off is actually a really great story. Make sure to check it out if you never have. The 2012 Ninja Turtle show, in its final season, had some pretty dark episodes known as Mutant Apocalypse. It takes place in a future where a mutagen bomb went off and turned the world into a post apocalyptic wasteland. Humanity was no more and only some mutants remained. You find out that the turtles were near the bomb when it went off and at the beginning of the story, all but Raphael and Donatello are thought to be dead. It's a super dark story, although there is some debate whether it's in continuity with the rest of the show. What do you think? Back in 2015, we almost got a Foot Clan origin show. Glitch Tech's co-creator Eric Robles mentioned back in 2020 that this would have been an alternate world origin where Shredder and Splinter would have met as orphaned street kids and would have started the Foot Clan. You can even see what the show would have looked like in some art that was released. This was Hamato Yoshi or Splinter before he eventually turned into a rat and this would have been Oroku Saki before he became the Shredder. You can see other photos as well of characters and villains. It's super interesting. What do you think? Would this have worked? In the 90s, a Ninja Turtle wrestler named Kawabunga, that's Kawabunga with a K by the way, appeared in the United States Wrestling Association. The character was played by professional wrestler Chris Champion. Kawabunga the turtle was referred to as the long lost brother of the other turtles. He wore black knee and elbow pads and sported a black bandana. He had matches, did interviews, and even cut promos during his time at USWA. Although his run eventually came to an end, Kawabunga is still remembered by some hardcore fans of both wrestling and the TMNT. Sick, 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 dude. In the cancelled fourth live action Ninja Turtles movie from the 90s, the one where the Turtles mutation would have kept changing them, Leonardo would have gotten a whole new look, his design would have had him sporting a rising sun design bandana and a utility belt. Also, Leonardo's continued mutation would have given him the ability to morph his skin into a kind of nearly impenetrable chrome-like surface. What do you think? 
In 1990, the Ninja Turtles starred in a promo video called Operation Blue Line. It was made to let people know of alternate forms of travel such as buses and railroads. The VHS is 11 minutes long, and it has the turtles in the suits you can see there. They actually had the cast of the 1987 cartoon voice the turtles in this, which is pretty cool. But fortunately, in a secret underground command post... good! I think I'm in love! Cowabunga, dude! <laughs> Playmates Toys once pitched a crossover between Star Wars and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The concept art, which was drawn by TMNT artist Michael Dooney, by the way, showed characters like a Chewbacca-style Michelangelo, a Luke Skywalker-inspired Leonardo, an April Leia, and a Darth Vader Shredder. Unfortunately, the crossover didn't happen, but the concept art inspired others to bring it to life. Recently, the Instagram page Geeks Antiques, one of the original people that posted the concept art, and one of the original TMNT figure sculptors, Scott Hensley, brought the TMNT Star Wars figures to life. How cool is that? In the IDW comics version of the Ninja Turtles, Splinter decapitates Shredder. This is when the Turtles and Splinter challenge Shredder to the Gauntlet, an ancient ritual to settle feuds. The Gauntlet eventually leads to a rooftop battle between the two parties. The Turtles do their best, but eventually it's a fight between Shredder and Splinter. The two go at it for a while, but in the end Splinter deals a swift blow to Shredder's torso. The fight's all but over, and Shredder asks for a warrior's death. The two sort of make up here as they used to be childhood friends in this version, but then Splinter does him the honor and beheads him. A super dark, but cool story. In the 90s, there were actually two different Ninja Turtle wrestlers called Kawabunga, one that started with a K and the other one that started with the C. They were at different organizations. The one that started with a C was at Smoky Mountain Wrestling. The person inside the suit was Brian Hildebrand, aka the referee from WCW, Mark Curtis. This wrestler had a black shell. It's said that he once wrestled Jim Cornette and that he came out to the song Turtle Power. Did you know? Images of a Ninja Turtles movie 3 Donatello suit can be found online. This is on the site Heritage Auctions. You can see it has just as creepy of a look on its face that other turtle suits that have surfaced over time have as well. It's super interesting that they all age this way. What do you think? In the original 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, some of the sets were actually built four feet off the ground. This was so they could have the puppeteers under the floor and run cables to the turtles. The puppeteers down there would be using monitors to be able to see what was going up on top through a camera. But other than that, they were not able to actually see with their eyes what was going on up above them, so everyone would just coordinate through the screens. Pretty neat. Before the Ninja Turtles got their more recognizable look, they originally looked slightly different. These are the first sketches that co-creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird first came up with. Eventually, the look was refined and we got a more familiar design to the Turtles that we all know, but it's pretty cool to see where it started. Follow for more. There is concept art of the Ninja Turtles for the cancelled fourth live action movie from the 90s, the one where the storyline would have had the Turtles mutation keep changing them as they got older. This one here is of Michelangelo. You can see here that they had him wearing clothes as his new mutation would have given him the ability to project a human appearance onto his turtle features, allowing him to interact freely with humans. What do you think? There was a deleted scene in the 2007 TMNT movie. This would have taken place at the end of the film and would have had Raphael giving his Night Watcher motorcycle to Casey Jones, signifying that Casey would have been picking up the vigilante role again, realizing that that's who he is and that he had to be true to himself. We would have later seen him picking up April on the motorcycle and would have also seen him proposing to April and she would have said yes. Unfortunately, this didn't make the final cut of the film. So the camera dips up and then we hook up to where the original ending is begins now. On the website Hero Prop, an original Venus de Milo Ninja Turtle head can be seen. It appears to have been restored and placed on a custom built display base. But yeah, it's pretty neat seeing all these old turtle artifacts. The voice actor for Leonardo in the 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle show, Cam Clark, also provided the voice for Rocksteady as well in the same series. Some of the voices that I am best known for would be, uh, first and foremost, uh, Leonardo of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hey, no problem. As well as Rocksteady, also from the Teenage Mutant Rich and Tur What is that called again? Did you know, in the 90s, one of the unrealized concepts for a fourth live action movie titled The Foot Walks Again was going to have some pretty interesting characters. Concept art for the film show a version of Casey Jones, but with electric hands, a character named Spider, who looks like would have turned into Nano Spider, and there's even some concept art of the Shredder, who looks like would have returned after his demise in Secret of the Ooze, as there's also a Super Shredder concept. This is the movie that would have introduced that fifth turtle named Kirby. The rise of the TMNT Ninja Turtles had repeating shape patterns throughout their designs. Raphael is made up of squares, Leonardo has triangles reoccurring throughout his design, Michelangelo has circles, and Donatello had rectangles. What do you think? My 
a Donatello head from the Ninja Turtles 3 movie can be found on the website Heritage Auctions. This headpiece is actually more of a skin that would slide onto the animatronic components that were worn on the actor's head. Kind of freaky looking. Follow for more. Hey, you were expecting maybe uh, the Adams family? <laughs> Good one. After the success of the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, director Steve Barron received an unexpected call from none other than Steven Spielberg. Spielberg expressed his admiration for the movie that he and his boy, who was around 10 years old at the time, had watched Ninja Turtles three times. Spielberg thought it was so different and special, and he wanted to work together with Barron on a project, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Unfortunately, Barron wasn't able to do it, but pretty cool to know that Spielberg is a fan of the Turtles. Bossa Nova! What? Yeah. Bossa Nova? In the cancelled fourth live-action Ninja Turtles movie from the 90s, where the Ninja Turtles mutation would have kept mutating them as they got older, Raphael would have looked like this. His mutation, as he aged, would have given him the ability to morph into what they were calling at the time, Raptor Raph. Unfortunately, the movie was never filmed, but years later, in the comics, Raphael turned into a similar beast. In the 1990s, a brief but memorable two-episode TMNT anime was released. In the first episode, the turtles were given mutastones. These mystical stones gave them the ability to transform into super turtles for three minutes at a time. Eventually, the turtles fused together to create one powerful turtle called Turtle Saint. Back when the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie came out, Mirage Comics published an official parody comic of the film. The title was The Green Gray Sponge Suit Sushi Turtles. The story loosely follows the story beats from the movie, although everybody's names are different. For instance, Splinter instead is called Matchstick, and he looks an awful lot like Mickey Mouse. Did you know, in the original Ninja Turtles Mirage comics, the ones that started it all, all the turtles wore red bandanas? Of course you do. At this point, it's pretty common knowledge amongst the fan base. But did you know that in the current IDW Ninja Turtles comics that are going on nowadays, they all started out in all red bandanas, before eventually donning their individual colors? A cool nod to the original comics. In an episode of the 1987 Ninja Turtle series, Donatello makes a machine to test how healthy each turtle is. Raphael fails his test badly and thinks he's on the verge of dying. Because of this, he devotes the rest of his time on Earth to make it a better place by taking on the persona of the Green Defender. Wearing a yellow mask and an outfit like one of the Three Musketeers, he does heroic deeds, including jumping into a volcano to save the day at one point. Pretty interesting. Follow for more. Hi, how you doing? I'm looking for a superhero costume. Uh, nothing fancy. Maybe in a 38 regular? Back in 2009, Peter Laird, co-creator of the Ninja Turtles, revealed that a Ninja Turtles movie was in the works and was going to be written by John Fusco, the writer who wrote the Young Guns movies. This was right before Laird sold the rights to the Turtles. So after that happened, the project lost momentum. But it's fun to think about what a Ninja Turtles movie by John Fusco would have been like. No killing. Objection, your honor. These boys are going to the grave. In the original version of the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, when Tatsu beats one of his students out of frustration, he actually beat him to death. The movie ratings board said that the scene had to be changed, and so audio of the other students saying, you'll be all right, was added. But apparently, in the French version of the film, the student still dies. Pretty wild. In the Ninja Turtles Secret of the Ooze movie, Mark Casso, the actor who plays Leonardo inside of the turtle suit, also plays the man in the newsroom who tells April that Donatello is calling her. Tell them I'll call them back. He sounds pretty insistent. Says his name's Donnie. The Raphael in suit actor from the third Ninja Turtles movie, Matt Hill, also got to play Raphael in the 1997 TV series Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. Although this time he did not play Raphael inside the suit, but instead voiced the character this time around. In the original Mirage Ninja Turtles comics, the Shredder had an older brother named Oroku Nagi. Hamato Yoshi, Splinter's owner, killed Nagi after Nagi attacked Tang Shin out of jealousy one day. This event set Oroku Saki, aka the Shredder, who was just a young boy at the time, on a dark path, leading to his eventual transformation into the iconic villain. Pretty wild, what do you think? Should they ever do the Oroku Nagi story again? In the cancelled fourth live-action Ninja Turtles movie from the 90s, where the Turtles' mutation would have continued to affect them, as they age, Donatello's appearance and abilities would have undergone a unique transformation. This is what he would have looked like. He would have had telekinetic and telepathic abilities, although he would have also been faced with diminishing eyesight, hence the vision-enhancing goggles. He also would have had an updated techno version of his bow staff. Pretty interesting. 
One of the ideas that they had for a sequel to the 2007 TMNT movie was that they would have loosely adapted the Turtles' 13-part comic book storyline, City at War. In this version of the story, it would have had Michelangelo feeling isolated from his brothers and joining the Foot Clan while donning a black bandana. Meanwhile, the other Turtles would have traveled to Japan and crossed paths with Karai, which would have eventually led to the return of the Shredder. What do you think? Were we robbed? Soon, we will have further business together. The kind that involves familiar faces from your past. In the IDW Comics version of the Ninja Turtles, after the Shredder is killed, we got a five-part story called Shredder in Hell. It's pretty crazy. It depicts Shredder's soul in the afterlife, going into the dark depths of hell, fighting demons, evil versions of the Ninja Turtles, and even people that he had killed back when he was alive. It's a pretty wild story, definitely worth checking out. You can see some of the different Ninja Turtle heads from the 90s movies online. Here we have a Donatello head from the third Ninja Turtles movie, and here we have a Michelangelo head with a big tear across the face. There's also this Leonardo that was on display at some point at a museum in North Carolina. And then there's this Raphael head here, which actually looks like it held up pretty well. Super cool seeing these old Ninja Turtle artifacts. In an episode of Ninja Turtles Back to the Sewers, Raphael gets a cape that gives him superpowers at one point. He becomes known as the Green Mantle, which was the name of the previous hero that had donned the cape. You can see that his appearance changes as he gets a Giga Chad chin, and you can see that he also sports a very Green Lantern inspired superhero suit. What do you think? Do you like superheroes? Raph. In the 1987 Ninja Turtle show, Leonardo had a love interest at one point. This is when he crossed paths with a female ninja named Lotus Blossom. The two kind of fell for each other, and she even wanted him to join her as a mercenary. However, he turned her down, hoping that she would stay, but sadly she left because her lifestyle offered more financial rewards. Interestingly, she later checks up on him one last time, disguising herself as a pizza delivery person and leaving a lotus flower in his pizza box.